All right, well, there's only one thing better than a part one, and that's part two. And this is part two of the 12 part series on how I like to retouch portrait photos. This comes from a much, uh, a much shorter tutorial where I just kind of went over very, a, a very light overview of the steps I like to take in my retouching process. Um, and this is going to sort of explode each one of those 12 steps. So it's a 12 part video tutorial where I take each step, make a little short video out of it. That's what we're covering here today. We're going to be talking about the pixel pushing aspect of beginning our retouching in photo. Photoshop. Now, I should just mention as a side note, this is my method of retouching, particularly when it comes to environmental portraits. So portraits like this that are shot out on location with a light or with no lights, uh, you pick and choose. But this is generally the process that I follow. So it may be a little bit different depending on what you're shooting and where you're shooting at, what time of the day you're shooting it, how you're lighting it, and so on and so forth. But the general ideas all remain the same, and you can just use each technique as you see fit in your own workflow, and hopefully it'll help you out a little bit. Um, also, before we jump into it, I'm selling a course all about how to retouch over on tutvid.com. A link just appeared in the video. Go check it out. It supports the site. It'd be super cool if you picked up a copy. If not, hey, you still got this tutorial and a ton of others that you can check out for free. Let's talk about pixel pushing here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a little liquify adjustment to her. Uh, we're going to adjust her hips just a little bit. We're also going to kind of floof out her hair a little bit and push some parts of the hair in maybe a little bit just to give a little bit more shape up there. And we're also going to get rid of this tree over here. So it's a little two, two different processes here that we're going to be doing. Um, but let's talk about liquify first. Now, we've brought a smart object into Photoshop. So when we apply the liquify filter, it's going to apply it as a smart filter, which means we can go back and edit it later. And it technically is a non-destructive edit that we're doing. Uh, so we can go filter liquify. Now I do want to just mention this is a 16-bit image and if you're working with an older version of Photoshop CC, uh, let's say we just go and really squiggle things up here and hit OK. Well first and foremost you can see it's a smart filter. We can shut it off, turn it on anytime we want. But also because it's a 16-bit image, uh, you're going to get like this really weird light box around wherever you liquefy. This is only something that happens in older versions of Adobe Photoshop CC, and it only happens when you use liquefy with a 16-bit image. Um, so the quick fix is we'll update to the latest version of Photoshop CC, and I know that if you have Photoshop CC 15.1.1, that's the first version where Adobe has fixed the glitch. If you have something older than that, uh, number one, update. If for some reason you can't update, what I've been told by uh, somebody who works for Adobe is that if you hold down the Alt or Option key while you select Filter Liquify, it will disable the GPU and therefore correct the glitch. I've never actually tried it myself, but that's what I was told. So uh, just take that with a grain of salt. But obviously, if you can, just update Photoshop altogether. Um, all right, so let's do this again. Filter, liquefy. Uh, like I said, what I want to do is push the hips in. So let's push the hips in first. I like to work with a uh, this this smudge tool, which is actually called the forward yeah forward warp tool. Uh, that's the name of it. But I call it the smudge tool. Uh, we can make our brush a little bit bigger using a uh, bigger or smaller using the square bracket keys. Those are little brackets next to the letter P. Um, I want I like my brush typically to be a little bit larger than the area which I'm pushing and pulling. So I'm just going to push the hip in a little bit there. Right, I'm going to push her uh, rear end in a little bit, but part of the problem is I'm affecting pixels out here by the edge of the building, so I need to make my brush a little bit smaller. I just want to bump that in a little bit. It looks a little too pointy, uh, not really natural. All right, I'm going to make my brush a little larger. I'm just going to push it in just a tiny bit down there. All right, and the key with liquify, I like to think of at least um, when I'm using liquify is if I can't really notice the change I've made, that's good because it's just subtle, it's subconscious, lots of little things equal one great change. Um, all right, now we can go and start messing with the hair. Part of the problem we're going to run into with hair, as you can see, is where we're going to start messing up her face. So we can lock the pixels of her face by using the little liquify masking option here. We can just paint over the skin on her face, all right, like this, just to get kind of quick and dirty. I'm just going to grab the skin like so, and then just paint over uh, all that stuff in the middle. So all of this red area, these pixels are kind of locked is a good way to think about it. Uh, maybe I can use the bloat tool here. I'm just kind of bloat, uh, bloat her hair up top here, bloat it here on the sides a little bit. Use the forward warp tool. The forward warp, warp tool is still pretty big. I'm going to push the hair in a little bit on the sides here, maybe pull it out over here. All again, like I said, subtle stuff. All right, let's go ahead and hit OK. And you're going to see that we've made a change. If I shut smart filters off, there was before, there's after. So we've just kind of boomed her hair a little bit and pushed the hips in just a touch. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, by the way, you can also do some lens correction at this point. Anything that's going to be a major, um, almost ground shifting adjustment in your image. The reason I like to do this stuff now is because later on down the road, if we're dodging and burning her face and we have all of our dodging and burning lined up over her face, and then all of a sudden her face changes, 
all the dodging and burning will need to be redone because all the pixels in her face have been moved around. All right, let's talk about getting rid of, getting rid of this tree here. I'm going to do this by creating a new layer. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the new layer icon and zoom in over here on the tree. Now, there's a number of ways we can get rid of this. Um, we're going to try using the just straight clone stamp tool and see if we can just kind of mesh something together. Uh, now, because I'm doing this on a new layer, I want to make sure that I'm sampling from current and below, and I've got a line ticked on. One of the other things we can do is reduce the opacity of the tool. Maybe knock it down around 60%, 62%, right? That's good. Uh, I can right click, make my brush a little bit larger here. And I want the edge to be relatively soft. So we'll go like 38, 40% is probably great. Uh, ignore that. That was just because I clicked once. Hold down the Alt or Option key to sample and let's sample right out here and try clicking over this little bit of green. You're going to have to click a few times because remember we have the tool opacity set down to 60%. All right, so we got rid of that top a bit. Um, you could try doing stuff like the edit fill and content aware fill, but you would need to pop this up onto its own layer and things like that. I would rather preserve all of, uh, just preserve everything. And if I'm, if I'm covering something up, I'm literally adding pixels to a blank layer. So if we decide we want to bring the tree back, we just shut this layer off and it's going to get rid of all of this cover up work that we're going to do. All right, so I'm going going to try sampling right about here and we go ahead and just start covering this up and you can see I'm forced to sort of paint multiple strokes because the tree is just not being covered up because I have my opacity set to 60%. I like that because it's almost forcing uh, me to paint a, a, a relatively realistic looking new sky in over uh, that this part of the tree. So we sort of just extend the sky out. Um, you could use tr free transform and stretch the image over. But again, we're just we're trying to do something that's up on a new layer all by itself. And then we're going to adjust and work with, uh, you know, kind of whatever we have left. Uh, as far as, you know, making all the colors work and, and everything just kind of fit and look like it's, hey, it's supposed to belong. All right, and you can see again, like I said, because we have this set down to 60% opacity, it's just really randomizing the whole effect for us, which again is, is probably a good thing. We do want to be a little careful and make sure we sort of fade it into the existing sky well. Uh, but, you know, a sky normally looks fairly random with, you know, clouds every, every which way. And this this is kind of easy, too, I should say, because it was a really overcast sky. So most of the sky is just kind of this blase uh, gray color. All right, so what I'll do now is just zoom out and I can still see that there's a lot of like small streakiness there. Um, and in order to really kind of curb some of that, again, just with the brush tool set to 65 or, or so, 62, I'm going to sample up here in the sky, all right? And I'm going to make my brush quite a bit larger, you know, four or 500 pixels. And I'm just going to paint over all this stuff with one stroke. All right, that was, that was too much opacity. So let's reduce the opacity down to like maybe 25 or so. Try this again, 20, uh, 20, 20 will work. We can make 20 work. All right, let's start right here and just try painting over all this stuff. Just going to sort of blend it in a little bit. We're just mixing these colors together is essentially what I'm trying to do. Uh, we can even take a little from right here. All right. That all looks pretty good. All right, cool. So that just helps smooth it out a little bit. And just like that, we've gotten rid of the tree. There was before, there's after. So we've applied our liquify. We've also removed a fairly large distracting background element. And actually, if I'm being picky, whatever that little thing is sticking up out of the top of that building is also a little distracting. I'm not going to lie. Let's crank the opacity up to 100% here. Sample. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to paint that right away. Whoop, I need to reduce the opacity so we can get a good mix of of colors here. There we go. And also sample from like over here. All right. Just blend all that right together. Cool. All right. So we got rid of that just kind of distracting dark piece down there. So now it just looks like there's a nice smooth end to the top, uh, to the skyline. And there's no distracting elements over there in that part of the image. It can take as much time as you want to play around with the sky, make it look as perfect as you want. Um, but that's it. That's the pixel pushing portion of this tutorial series. I hope you loved it. And for pixel pushing and liquify and correcting dumb 16 bit glitches, thank you, Photoshop. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching that video. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel. All the cool kids are doing it. Also, head over to my website and sign up for my newsletter email. You get a great free gift for signing up, and I email all kinds of great stuff, never any spam. So make sure you sign up today. Thanks for watching.